All right, where you wanna go? You know, typically I would make the suggestion, but where you wanna go? You got a choice, Olive Garden, um, two urban licks. Uh, two urban licks, we going like that? Um, what's the Jamaican place? Bahama Breeze. Bahama Breeze. Or Cheesecake Factory. You choose. You know, this is an issue with a lot of marriages. Some men are afraid to even make a choice mm -hmm. and they're afraid to get shut down. I mean, no, that's not us. Mm -hmm. and that's something that a lot of men deal with, rejection. So we make a choice, that ain't good enough. Mm -hmm. You're gonna shoot it down. But what if I promise I won't shoot it down? Okay. And it depends on the wife, because some wives don't make no decisions ever, they indecisive, but some wives right. do. Um, Bahama Breeze. Sounds good to me. Right. That's a thing, that's like a real, real, real big issue. Mm -hmm. Where the wife wants the husband to make a decision because she's tired of making decisions and he don't make no decisions. And he's like a lump on the log. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he don't want to make a decision because in the past, mm -hmm. she's going to shoot it down. Right. So what do you do? What do you do with that? What, what do you do? do? What do you do? What do you do? Speak to it. The husband has to say. The husband has to say he's afraid. Mm, that's a tough one. I'm afraid to make a decision because if it's not right, it, but I'm a hero. He, he says that, then what's going to happen probably? Well, you got to stop being so damn soft. What you afraid of? I'm tired of you being afraid of stuff. Uh, uh, that's the that's not nice. No, I'm saying that's not I nice, know, but that's what happens. Saying, that's what they say. That's and they, they, just, they were just vulnerable. That's not nice. Well, maybe because the woman is tired. I mean, I get that she might be tired, but... To call him soft just because he just shared something vulnerable? I've had husbands to tell me that when they've tried to share their feelings, they're put into this category of they're soft. I don't want to hear your feelings. Won't you just make a damn decision? <laughs> that's that's what I hear. I think honestly, I think those are that that case that is in the case of an emasculated man. I think women emasculate their husbands. And then want them to act masculine when they pick and choose. But you can't emasculate your husband and then expect him to be masculine. So what if the what if the man is just passive and not have anything? He's to emasculated. Do? Any well, man that's passive is emasculated. But what if what if? Because he wasn't made to be that way. But what if I I didn't need to hear my question yet? Okay, sorry. My what question. if she didn't emasculate him? He just has that temperament. Well, you know what? You, you you go ahead and make the decision. And she didn't do anything. She did not do it, but somebody did. Um, well, I'm I'm saying whoever that was. I'm trying to take. I'm trying to stick it for the wise. Some women have not emasculated their husband, and the husband still is so passive that he's afraid to even say anything because of. So you know, my question would be, how has the wife coped in the past with his passivity? Here you go. Right. There you go. Because you can make a you can make a bad situation worse or you can help. So that, that's gonna be the question. Well that's a good question. How did she cope? Does she overcompensate or does she do nothing either? Does she carry resentment? Does she talk about him to anybody else? I mean that has a lot to do with it. And does she know why he's passing? What was the quote I sent you? A child in a man's body wanting the perks of a husband that was deep he's a child, in a a child he's a child in a man's body but wants the perks, wants the perks of, of a, a husband. husband yeah that was that came from right you here. created that that, came, that came from my, my that came belly. from your belly that came from the belly Welcome to I like your arms. Watch it now. You're very, very masculine. It's a grown man here. Welcome to Can We <laughs> Welcome to Grown Man here. You're about to get turned out. I'm trying to do a I'm trying to do a vlog. Why though. can't you just say thank you? Your arms are nice. Thank you, but you touching it. Why gotta get turned out? You're about to get turned out. It's all man meat. It's all man meat. Touching a grown man. You're about to get turned <laughs> out. 
welcome Turn to, me out. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome <laughs> to Can We Talk? I'm Derek and I'm Sonia. Thank you for joining us. You know, you guys joined us on our date mm -hmm. night. We went to Bahama Breeze, as you saw. We had a wonderful time. It was nice. And that's how we really talk, honestly. We talk about marriages. You know, all we the talk. Time. Who? Uh, people do these vlogs all the time. They got material and they got. I don't have. Anyway, I, I was thinking about. I watched so many different vlogs on marriages. What well, we watch, mm -hmm. and different vlogs on their opinions about marriage and the wife and the husband. We hear so many different things. Some of it is very good context, mm -hmm. content, mm -hmm. and some of it is just straight foolishness. <laughs> but anyway, so we. I have my cue cards today because we're gonna have some good talk here. So mm -hmm. in that conversation, what came out of that emasculation, emasculated man and men not being able to be vulnerable and safe to talk about their feelings to their wives. And Sonia gave a perspective. Um, she says, well, maybe the wife has to cope in a better way mm -hmm. in regards to helping her husband. Mm -hmm. I was supporting the wives. Mm -hmm. I was saying that there's some men who just like lump on the logs and they don't do anything. And so whether they are afraid to say something or not, they were afraid before they got married. Mm -hmm. So this conversation some was- Some were, and some were afraid after they got married. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So there was a statistic that um, we saw. It was an amazing statistic. 80%, 80% of divorces are initiated by the wife, 80% mm -hmm. of divorces that were initiated. Deep, That's a statistic. Mm -hmm. The other one is 50% of marriages end in divorce. Why? Pause for the singles. So if you're single- That's supposed to be in my ear. That's supposed to be in your ear, huh? You think they heard me? They heard you. Okay. Singles, check this out. If you are single, and you and you, we just gave you that statistic. What does that tell you? I want to pause and let you think about that for a minute. You're single. Eighty percent of wives initiate the divorce. Fifty percent of marriages end in divorce. So just sit in there for a minute. You probably want to say, I need to do more research. I need to look at myself. I need to see all these factors on why this statistic is so high. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to try to answer that question today. <sighs> Why is it that 80% of divorces are initiated by the wife, mm, right? Mm, 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 and what I want to look at is more so, not just the wife initiated it, but what was the husband doing or not doing mm -hmm. to create an environment for her to settle for divorce? Okay. Oh, that's, what, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Well, so are we first, gonna address that? Yeah, we got three wives. We got three. Why? Okay, I got a fourth wife. Okay. Remind me. Okay. This Remind is probably one of those vlogs that we're going to just go straight through it mm -hmm. and may break it up into part one and part two, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna get both parts one part one and part two at the same time. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna wait a week. So here's the first why I believe accountability. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I say accountability, is that most couples don't have a grown-up conversation and say. We should not have gotten married mm. or married at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to go back. We mm -hmm. have to go back and say, should we have gotten married based on all the information? Or should we not have gotten married at that time, but waited, mm -hmm. waited for counsel? So that would be the first why. Okay. Accountability. Okay. Any thoughts on that? It's good. Self-explanatory. Yep. Accountability. Some of y'all have to actually say that to each other. Like, we should not. We have a, a couple that came in last week that said that. They married after six months of knowing each other. Let me just throw that out the and way. And they said, we should not have done that. Let me say this. I'm sorry. Can you, if, you if you're dating, well, I'll get that. If you're dating, <laughs> I'm going to single for a minute. If you're dating and you decide to get married less than a year of not going through four seasons, I'm talking about seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall. We said this in the vlog before. Yeah, we did, but it's, it's right? worth repeating. Well, follow up with that, because you do a better job of explaining the four seasons. Well, here's, and we're talking about, you're just dating them. You haven't gotten proposed to or talking engagement. You're just dating them because 
you want to see how that person moves in the summer. Some people get the cases of the jollies, right? That means that they're so jolly and happy that it's warm, they start looking at all the eye candy and you know, they may not be able to handle the visual stimulation, but you wouldn't know that if you married him before the summer came. That's true. I never said that before. I, I did. No, I mean, okay. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Christmas uh, holiday season, some people suffer from seasonal affective disorder, depression. Mm -hmm. That's a depression that comes when the sun goes down early and um, rises late and it's cold. You wouldn't know that if you get married before that time, then you got the holidays going into the springtime. Mm -hmm. You don't know if they like to travel a lot more or spend their money on Christmas gifts. Or pay their taxes. Or pay their taxes, file their taxes. File their taxes. You won't know that. You won't know that. You'd have married them before tax season, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what's that? Winter, the summer, winter, spring, fall. and fall. Fall comes with all kinds of changes, right? So you gotta be able to assess how they're gonna handle the change of the drastic weather, temperature, seasonal, mm -hmm. right? From the summer, looking around at women or not looking around at men or whatever, to the fall, where really fall is about renewal, you know, like, you know, the, the leaves are falling off the trees, that's when the ground has germination. That's when the seeds are planted. So it's almost like it's that time of, of growth. And you wanna see how somebody is gonna go from a summer, where it's usually play, 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 to that season of time to be serious, intentional, you know, work-minded and so on. So it's important to see how your intended handles all the seasons. I think some people are happy. Why number two? Because we're answering the question, 80% of marriages were, 80% of divorces were initiated by the wife. Why? Why number two? Lack of understanding. A, lack of understanding about marriage. Let's just stay there. Mm. Divorces are initiated, part of the reason is because there's a lack of understanding about what really, what marriage is all about. Lack of understanding about marriage. And in case you don't know, marriage was created by God to represent the Godhead, right? There's a male and female. He created they, them after his own image. So he made us female and male after his own image. That means God has a male and female side. And he created us in that image in order to procreate, to have children to be like him too, okay? Mm -hmm. That was the whole point of marriage. Right. In case y'all didn't know. It wasn't so you could file jointly and save some money at tax time. It wasn't so you could have babies um, just so that you won't be lonely because you were the only child and you didn't have no siblings. Mm. People have babies for different reasons. It wasn't just so that you could prove to Nene and them that you are fertile because they all got all these kids. It wasn't to get your ex-boyfriend jealous or ex-girlfriend jealous. It's none of those reasons. It's not even because you fall in love. Because people that fall in love fall out of love. Because that's not love. The other part of lack of understanding oh, is oh. lack of understanding the meaning of forgiveness. Say what you say all the time about forgiveness before you get married, if you don't. Oh, if you, if you have a fundamental problem forgiving, that means that you keep thinking about that thing that was done to you and you get those horrible feelings that come up and then you see that person, you avoid them, you can't talk to them and you can't forgive, don't get married. Don't get married because marriage is gonna require, what did Jesus say, seven times 70 times 70. We mm -hmm. added that one, okay? Because you're literally going to offend each other. You've got two people becoming one, mm -hmm. trying to, Become one with your differences, different genders, different purposes, different experiences, different childhood, mm -hmm. uh, different desires, different interests. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're going to offend each other. And it's crazy. It's crazy that people get married thinking it's going to be easy. I don't know what would make people. I know what would make people think that euphoria, the euphoria phenomenon. Mm -hmm. But I'll speak about that later. You sure? You yeah. can talk about nope, that thing I'm gonna now. I'm going to speak about it later. Okay. Forgiveness. Um, 
27 years of marriage, Sonia and I, I have forgiven Sonia 495 <laughs> times. The Bible says 70 times seven, that's 490. I have, I so have she's, forgiven Derek 8,000 times. Forgiveness is, is a part of lack of understanding because see when, divorces happen for different reasons. We're not minimizing divorce. We're, you know, we're not minimizing the fact that there's some things that are, are so egregious and so difficult that Look, you're a part of a divorce. You divorced. I'm a, yeah, I'm, so I'm we, a we, we, so we, we couldn't are, say that if that right. was the case, right? right? You know, so we don't want it's to. It's not that God likes it, but we, we don't want to minimize it. But we want to get some understanding around that number, that eighty percent of why women have been the ones to file. Uh, the other reason is un lack of understanding. If you notice, there's a theme: lack of, lack of, lack of understanding. Lack of understanding of what self being selfless really means. Mm. What that really means in marriage, selfless. So if my wife goes That's to Walmart and say, babe, I'm going to Walmart, it's 11 o'clock at night. True story, this is at every now and then. And I'm sitting on the couch, I had a long day, chilling, watching, a, uh, catching up on my sports center. Mm -hmm. and my wife, babe, I'm going to Walmart, I gotta pick up some things because it's getting late, I gotta take care of those things. Me being selfless would put, pause the TV, put my shoes on, and get in the truck and go with her. And he does it every time. Every time. Every time. Even when I don't want him to come. And she does. She doesn't, you know, she's she's a G. She's from Brooklyn, New York. You know, ain't nobody. She walked the streets of <laughs> New York coming from grad school, Columbia University, walking the streets of Harlem. Harlem. Mm -hmm. So she really doesn't <laughs> require me to protect her like that. But, uh, you know, to the point we're talking I'm about. I'm licensed to carry. She's licensed. We're both licensed. Come on and mess with us. We got something for you. <laughs> got two hot ones for you. <laughs> so, being, so, if you don't know what hot ones are, just go ahead and, just go ahead and look at the Urban Dictionary. So lack of, um, of understanding what self being selfless means. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one in marriage. Mm -hmm. Because see, once you get married, there's going to be a series of events and situations that's going to require you to lay self down, to put self to the side. So lack of understanding of marriage, of forgiveness, of selflessness. The last one is the big one. We're going to spend some time on this one. Lack of understanding the significance of childhood trauma, mm. especially that's your in specialty. men. And we talked about childhood trauma a few videos, I think, in the last year. Uh -huh.